My name is Bob Murdoch, and I'm president of Murdoch Super Secure. With my able bodied assistant Kevin Jones, we're going to show you how to assemble and install an, a drinking fountain that would be anti freezing and it's wall mounted. So if you bear with us, we're going to begin unboxing the component parts and laying them out to make sure that we have all the correct items. Everything is wrapped with foam, and your drinking fountain by itself should come out like this in a bag. The drinking fountain is galvanized steel and powder coated. In addition to the drinking fountain, there'll be a tailpiece. Okay. This is a galvanized box that contains all of the component parts that you'll need to make the unit anti freezing. Kevin, can I have the backing plate? There you go. And this is the backing plate that you will use to help mount the drinking fountain on the wall. What we're going to do first is disassemble the access panel on the drinking fountain. I removed some of the screws already. This again is a galvanized plate, all held together with vandal resistant screws. You'll see inside the drinking fountain, everything is pre-assembled. This is your air control line, and this is your water supply line leading to the bubbler. This item that you see here is actually a flow control that can be dialed up or down, and I would recommend before you reassemble the access panel that you test the fountain and adjust the water flow with this part. Everything is loosely assembled to make it easy to put the component parts together. Okay, Kev, let's mount this plate. This is our backing plate. We're going to show you on a mock wall that we have here. Kevin has pre-drilled the holes to give you an example. And this backing plate is critical to actually help sandwich the wall in between the drinking fountain on the outside of the wall and the plate on the inside of the wall. And Kevin now has the bag of material and parts and what we're going to do, since he's already pre-drilled this wall, we're going to thread through the wall the studs, the all-thread studs, that come into the middle component here, the middle hole of the plate. Now we're going to thread these all-thread bolts almost all the way through, and on the opposite side where the drinking fountain mounts, we're going to leave enough of a stud area that the drinking fountain can be mounted easily on a four bolt pattern. Kevin, if you can come around with the drinking fountain on this side. And Kevin's going to mount the drinking fountain right on those four studs. As such. And I'm going to go back to the hardware bag Oh, I'm sorry, I have the hardware bag here. <laughs> My able-bodied assistant, That's Kevin. Right. And the hardware bag will include four nuts and four washers, four finish washers. For added security, you may want to add a lock washer in between the finish washer and the nut. And what we're going to do is reach underneath the drinking fountain and put those nuts on the exposed studs along with the finish washer. Right now I'm only going to put these finger tight for purposes of the demonstration, but you would normally make them very snug so that you don't have any gap between the wall and the outside portion of the drinking fountain. Okay, just like so. In the meantime what you have, we're allowing the supply line and the water line, supply air line and the water line to hang free from this point and be very very careful when you take the tape off of all of these lines so that you take very careful care not to destroy or nick any of the airline by putting a hole in any place as it will lead to bleed off on the airline. Now we're going to unwrap the airline that leads from the push button to the servo motor through the wall and right now for time being we're going to thread the airline through the wall 
being very, very careful not to either kink the line or cut the line in any way, shape, or form. So if you're going through a concrete block wall or if you're going through some rough surfaces, be very, very careful about threading that clear air line back through the wall. The supply line leading to the bubbler is the same way. It's also plastic, so be very, very careful about putting it through the wall. Temporarily, we're going to let it hang here until we add the additional supply line between the bubbler and the servo. Now, just to be sure and be very careful, we're never sure what type of wall you're going to be mounting this on, whether it's a concrete block wall or a 2x4 stud wall on 16-inch centers. For the time being, what we're going to do is anchor this plate in such a manner that it will keep it secure. The four bolts coming through the wall will help, but you need to anchor the plate as best you can on either wall, whether it's a concrete wall, a stud wall, or a block wall. Okay, Kev, if you would please just go ahead and temporarily run those through. And this will ensure that this plate's not going to move in any way, shape, or form. And that should do it. There's no reason to run all four, but it'll give you an idea where the different mounting points can be for your secured areas. And as I said before, again, making sure that the plate is properly fastened to the back side of the wall. In most cases, your back wall will be enclosed with a door so that this becomes a plumbing raceway that you'll have access to all of these points. Now we're going to open up the box, which is the heart of the matter. And what you'll see here, when we take the lid off, are all the servo motor parts, the trap, and the parts and pieces that we include with each one of these kits. This happens to be a GRC 75 FRA1 unit, and the one signifying that the bubbler is a single unit. We do make these in a bi-level unit also, and in that case you would have dual boxes, one for each bubbler. And what you're going to see when you open the box, this is once again all galvanized to prevent any rust since you're going to be in a water environment. Everything's packed together, and inside the box you're going to find several different pieces. Number one, we provide a short stainless piece so that you can supply the water leading directly to the stop strainer mechanism. The other component parts that you see in here, obviously, besides our supply line fitting, I'm going to lay this to the side for the moment, supply line fitting, and of course, the line that leads to the bubbler. Again, we use all plastic to be able to facilitate the access to the component parts in addition to being able to be flexible going through whatever wall and parts and pieces that you may have. Again, please be very careful when you mount these component parts because these plastic lines are not impervious to harsh abuse. You need to be very, very careful about how you thread these lines through. Okay, now I can show you that we've pre-mounted the box on the inside to simulate what the box would look like mounted on the back side of the wall away from the drinking fountain. To facilitate this installation, we have drilled an additional hole in order to center the, the drain lines coming out of the fountain so that they flow properly. And most important, the water that would drain out of the bubbler after each use then drains down into this cup and out through the drain line. And you can see the box is centered here so that the drain line from the bowl and also the drain line coming from the bubbler will drain into this cup and out through that other componentry. Now, what we're going to do, I've already threaded through the supply tubing from the push button. And I think the best way to show you how to do this, since we have a short wall here, is that we will take this supplied component that you see here in the tubing, we'll throw it and set that aside. We'll take the additional tubing coming from the push button and slice the tubing accordingly. Now, if I had a tubing cutter with me, it would be much better than just using a pocket knife because your goal here is not to crush the tubing. The tubing has to have a clean cut so that it does find a way to sit properly through the knurled nut. Now, that knurled nut then is then placed inside and on top of the servo motor with the clear tubing, making sure that it bottoms out on top of the servo motor. Okay. Now to test that that's all working well, we're just going to push the button and you'll hear the clicking here which shows that the servo motor is working correctly. You put your hand on there and actually feel the vibration of that working. This is the water supply line that would lead to the bubbler. Now on the other side, remember I pointed out earlier, this is your flow control. We have no flow control built in here except for a small component here, but this is the flow control for the bubbler. And this goes on the outside underneath the arm. 
what we're going to do is show you that this line, this neural nut, and this clear supply line needs to be threaded up through the port where you would pass out the drain line and the supply line for the bubbler. One thing that I need to point out very clearly here, this is an anti-freezing drinking fountain. So the goal is after every time you use the drinking fountain and release the push button, the water that would remain in the supply line between the servo motor and stop strainer mechanism to the bubbler will drain back down and out through this component here, draining the water out of the system each time. So that there's no water that remains in the supply line between the wall and the bubbler. Remember, this is in a heated area, in a heated space, so that it will not freeze. The other item that I'd like to point out to you is where your lines pass through the wall, you're going to need to provide some sort of insulation component so that there's no way that the cold air penetration will come back through the wall and come into the box. If the cold air comes in here, it will freeze this componentry and the drinking fountain will not work. So make sure that if there's any protrusions through the wall here that you feel air coming through, you must make sure that you insulate those and keep the cold air out of the box. Now, if we go back out here on the other side, I'll have Mario find, follow me over here. This push-to-fit fitting is very easy to put together. This push-to-fit fitting will bottom out just like this. If you remember, it's a quick collar. If you need to pull it apart, you simply squeeze down and pull the tubing out. There's no mechanical component there whatsoever other than pushing to make sure it gets past the O-ring and into that volume control. Since this line comes through, you'll make the supply line leading from the servo motor do the same thing. And then what will happen is you simply need to make sure that everything is clear and there's no binding whatsoever on either component, whether it's the air line or the water supply line or the drain piece coming from the bowl. Now if we go back here on the back side, I'll simply show you that we also had our supply line that would come through and make your connection right here against your stop strainer mechanism. Now the trick here is obviously to make sure that the water supply leading to this componentry is fresh and clear. So be sure that you always flush the supply line before you connect it to the supply line leading to the stop strainer mechanism. Make sure that the water runs clear for approximately a minute or two before you make that connection. And what you see here is obviously a tailpiece leading out to the drain, supply line leading here. Now, you can obviously put everything back together, making sure that there are no kinks, making sure that this mechanism that you see here, the entire box, is not mounted above the outlet of the bubbler. It must be mounted below the outlet of the bubbler to make sure everything properly drains. And as a final test, before you put the panel back on, make sure you go out and operate the drinking fountain a couple of times before this panel goes back on, sealing the system back into place. Once again, if you need to work on any of these components that you see here and you don't have an area to, way to shut the water off, the stop strainer mechanism here can be screwed all the way down and you can operate on the servo motor with ease. And that should about do it for GRC 75. If there's any other questions, please feel free to give us a call at 1-800-453-7465. Thank you.